Well, good morning once again, and welcome to our little feature spotlight on the cults. But this morning we're looking at uh, not perhaps a cult, but uh, a religious institution which many people know about, and many people know nothing about it. Uh, I was first subjected, I suppose, when I was a little boy, when my mother used to buy Quaker porridge oats. And I'd look at the box as I was having my porridge in the morning, see a picture of this very happy man with a big smiling face wearing a big hat. He was a Quaker, of course. And I also found out many years later that Fry's chocolate, Cadbury's chocolate, uh, Roundtree Macintosh were part of the uh, families that were Quaker. I, I suspect nowadays they're part of some big conglomerate being taken over, but there may still be family on them. But even a few years ago, Sir Peter Cadbury, who was a practicing Quaker, was very active in the movement. Um, what do you know about the Quakers? George Fox was its founder in the 17th century, a true man of God. He was premillennial in his eschatology. He was a King James man, he went to prison for preaching. Uh, had it very hard. He refused to call Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday by their names because of their pagan origin. Paid a heavy price for his faith. Thousands came to Christ through his preaching of the gospel. And indeed, if he was alive today, he'd be very much considered a biblicist or a Christian fundamentalist, a true man of God, and he'd be very surprised by his religion today. But of course, it's all changed, I suspect, since the beginning of the last century when many Quakers became uh, conscientious objectors. We were talking to a Quaker in some town, I won't say where, a few, few months ago actually, and we said to him, you know, you shouldn't be involved in politics if you are. It's not your job really, it's to tell people they need to be born again and saved. And he said, oh yes, and I said, well your founder, George Fox, would have been out in the streets. He said, well, Mr. Fox, I'm afraid, got it wrong. Yes, he did. So there we are, there's a Quaker telling the founder of the Quakers got it wrong. But uh, they are very political, aren't they? Today's average Quaker is ecumenical, a hyper-pacifist. Mm. Uh, indeed, we spoke to a gentleman in the building behind us just a few moments ago, and there's no creed as such. Uh, you can even be an agnostic and join the organisation. <laughs> and that would explain to me why Sheila Hancock, the wife of the actor John Thor, joined some years ago, because it's very much an easy religion to be part of. Well, I suppose if you've got any crisis in your life, whatever it is, or the crisis of faith or a personal crisis, there's the religion to come to. Yes. I mean, there's no uh, commitment at all, and you can sort of do what you like. A uh, very small num membership, I believe, in this country. 25,000 at last counts. Still very powerful, though, uh, I think, in the political arena. I mean, people always refer to the Quakers and the peace movement and so forth. But here we have it behind us, and I believe at their meetings, uh, they sit in silence and wait for the, the spirit. So-called spirit. So-called spirit, spirit is, we're not sure. We're not sure to speak through them. Yeah. But there we are. If you know anything about the Quakers or your family was in it, or um, and correct me if I'm wrong about the Fries and the Roundtree Macintosh and the, uh, the Cadbury connection, we very interested to hear your views. They certainly were uh, Cadbury family many, many years ago, so very rich families as well. Anything else you want to say on the Quakers? Just finally, uh, Richard Nixon was a well-known Quaker. Yes raised a Quaker by his family, uh, yes. later joined the Freemasons, uh, and as I mentioned, Sheila Hancock is one of their most latest recruits. But they are not a Christian organisation, they do not hold to the inerrancy of Scripture, uh, the deity of Christ, or uh, blood, uh, faith alone to the blood of Christ alone. So we wouldn't endorse them as a Christian group for the day. And interesting, just a quick before we go, on the, I still remember a few years ago on the £10 note, the £20 note, on the back was a picture of Elizabeth Fry visiting some prisons, I think in Newgate Prison. Uh, that would have gone there by the permission of the Chancellor of the Exchequer, which was probably Gordon Brown at the time. So there may be something in there. But let us know if you want to know more about this. Once again, it's good to talk to you. Thank you. And Maranatha. Thank you.